Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at Highland Park 16-year-old connoisseur's choice, Dustin. This 16-year-old comes in at 57% ABV, and unless my eyes are deceiving me, because I am older. Yeah, well, in their lighting, it's not great for reading. <clears throat> no. <sighs> First fill sherry hogshead. Am I right? Yes, sir. Now, it's a hogshead, so that, that can be a little... Uh, Misleading. Yeah, I mean they can all they can be really oaky when you've got that less surface area. You know they're bigger than a bourbon barrel, but they're they're not huge, like a cherry bud. Sixteen years, a lot. That's a good age statement. Good ABV, a distillery that we are huge fans of, that we have been disappointed with for the last half a decade, <laughs> as far as what they've put out. But maybe independent bottlers are going to do us do us right. Um, ben said it before. It's a two thousand four vintage. 518 bottles. Which, that's a lot for a hogshead. Mm -hmm. Bottle on 27th of August, 2020. And this one was crazy cheap too, Mike. It was like 130 bucks for Great cast deal. drink, first fill. Great first deal. deal. You've had this a while, haven't you? Yeah, and I got this one, I probably got it in end of 2020 or early 2021. Yeah. It, I mean, it's dark. I mean, it's not the darkest yeah. dark I've ever seen. You know how it works with our reviews, right, Mike? I bring stuff like this. When it's near the end, because it's, it's had years. And I bring, you know, full bottles when it's like, oh, this just came out. We should get to it. Never in the middle. <laughs> Every once in a while, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> doing, what we can, doing what we can for you. Woo. It's rich sherry plum sweetness. Huge sherry notes for sure. Although, and that the first nosing I got was all sherry goodness. Mm -hmm. Second, I'm getting this interesting note. And it's a little of that, like, kind of burnt note you get on um, fire from Highland Park. Where it mm. really kind of gets a little like, it got aggressively like peat notes coming from that one. And then I'm also picking up a heavy oak influence here. Uh, there's a lot of wood coming through on this one. Yep. You don't have to convince me it's first fill. <laughs> no. But you know what? You know, so I think um, anytime I look at years, you know, like mm -hmm. 16, like why 16 years? Why not 15 or 20, 20, 21 to something a little more? Either set in stone as far as mm -hmm. what whiskeys are normally bottled at or just rounded off as far as intervals of five or ten. So whenever I see that, I think, oh, they must have thought this is the right time for either a good reason or a bad reason. Yeah. And I think this would not have gone much longer as far as the oak note being pleasant. This was on its way to turning. Yes. 100% this was going to turn into an oak mess and they were going to have to blend it. <clears throat> but I tell you what, we, they didn't get there yet. It's just, it's just on the edge. And I like living on the edge when it comes to heavy oak. Chestnuts are coming through here, like roasted chestnuts. I was going to say walnuts, but yes, some type of shell. It's been roasted. That's the beautiful, beautiful part of it. Yeah, it's so... The, the sherry cask influence is so heavy in this. The smoke is there, but it's fighting to really like show what it can do. It's like a bird just trying to extend its wings, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's what I'm getting here on the nose is this very odd grain remnant uh, sherry note. But again, this is Highland Park. It's all single malt, all barley. Yeah, the sherry note's pretty predominant. So you're saying with the waffle thing, there was highs and lows in it. And there was this kind of... Yeah. It was, it was there, but it was, there was low it, spots and high spots. Yeah, and I mean, it's like... It's the difference between like, you know, if you have something that's well like, you know, blended and then or something where it's got little like, you know, pieces is still in it, you know? It's just gritty. <clears throat> M&M's in your blizzard. Yeah, to me, the sherry note is pretty consistent and substantial. Um, from the, it, I remember from the last time I had this whiskey. It's just it's the wood notes that are really throwing me off on this one. I would appreciate a little bit more smoke in this one. It feels like the PPMs is a little bit low. But again, what I've always said with this, I feel like the... The sherry cask is somewhat um, corralled, the smoke note on I this. think it's actually high in PPMs for Highland Park, but it's that very dirty fire type note, whereas it's not like the more smoky. Was uh, fire the pork cask? Yeah. Well, just like in that one, I mean, you're talking about a pretty dark. Dark, ashy. Yeah. The, probably a lot brought on by the cask. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a similar heavy cask, heavy oak influence. It feels, and it just, it comes off heavy on the nose, too. Mm. Just dense. Dense and rich, though. And it is sweet. You know, it's always when I look at Highland Parks, I'm expecting, like, oh, give me my next great Highland Park experience, like the 25 or the 30 <laughs> or the cast strength version of them. Like, where's the next big bang from Highland Park? And it's just, ah, give me more. And <laughs> this is kind of where I'm at on the nose on this. What are you picking up on the ballot? 
it again the finish on this thing is it's a castoring version of fire for me it's sooty it's dirty that big oak note combined with that sooty highland park peat which i'm not used to getting very often they're really coming together uh making this a really dirty aggressive i mean again it's like you're walking over like you know fresh coals i mean it's very smoky now that said super sherry up front a lot of that and then after the fire kind of subsides just got a nice like kind of candied sweetness not a lot of depth to the sweetness it's very simple in the sherry sweetness yeah so to me initially big big sherry punch purple purple sherry diamond tap mm -hmm. sherry then when you get past that man i mean it's, it's lovely chocolate to me nice milk chocolate it does come off sort of charcoal as far mm -hmm. as like that chocolate smoke note. Um, it, it's kind of very reminiscent of, say, sometimes what Glendronic gives me as far as like a, like a coal note. It's kind of similar to that to smoke. What I mean by that is, you're right, it got a very dark with the Highland Park smoke, which is something that it doesn't always do because Highland Park usually works very well with sherry. It feels like the cask really overtook a lot of the stiller characteristic and what it normally would give me. But yeah, it just comes off sooty and... Almost like either like a Glen Goyne 25 or something like that as far as like the dark darker sherry note on it. I could even bring in like some burnt plastic notes that are coming through here. Very un-Highland Park-like. But again, I've had it in the fire. I know it's a Highland Park note. But I think again these, I think it's the casks they used. I'm wondering if maybe they, I know it's first fill, but I wonder if they heated them up or charred them a little bit before they used them. They definitely made it take a dark turn. In 16 years, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but it's first fill. Yeah, and well, you know, one thing I always love, and as I'm already nosing it, I'm instantly getting it. I love some of these dirty, darker sherries because you add some water and it instantly sweetens it up. And this is no exception. Instantly, the nose is sweeter. Instantly, the nose is sweeter. You're right. Who knows now what we'll do for the palate? Now it's red fruits coming through way more. <sighs> Christmas berries. Chocolate's coming through more too. Chocolate's on the palate, but it's definitely on the nose here now. Mm, milk chocolate now. Yeah, milk chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like always, water usually helps the nose a bit. The question is, did it help the palate? Oh, yeah. That dirtiness is cleaned up big time. Mm. Mm, now the finish is actually giving me something different here. It's... Uh, Oh, I'm starting to get a little bit of Highland Park smoke instead of the soot. Oh, I like that. And that was the problem with fire was it was already so low. It was like 45 or 44 percent or something. I think it was 45 one, yeah. Yeah, you couldn't really add uh, water to it without really thinning it because it was kind of a thin whiskey to start with. This plenty of room. In fact, I'm going to put another drop in. Well, that just improves dramatically because I'm not going to lie, folks. Neat without water, my score was going to be a. About an 85 or 6. Come now. <clears throat> it's heavy. It was heavy sherry before, and it was slightly over oak. But That dirtiness to me was unpleasant. Uh, it went, went, to, went the wrong direction on the peat and soot for me. But <clears throat> with water, it's more recognizable Highland Park smoke. Smokes come up quite a bit, mm -hmm. especially the top of the glass. On well, the mm -hmm. palate, it didn't change that much for me on the palate with water. Maybe I didn't put in enough water. Yeah, it sweetened it up a bit. I'll try a little I'll, bit more. I'll go more. It sweetened it up a bit, but all the same players were still there. This moved around. It was less tannic the, the, the sootiness and has gone down, and the, the oak has shifted. It's more more of that, you know, walnut, chestnut kind of thing that's going on here. A little bit smoked. See, I think the other notes came up, but I still think the, those those notes are still there. For me, the, the dirtiness of the soot has gone away completely, and it's completely saved this whiskey. And I'm, actually, I know for a fact, every time I drink this, I have added water. Because I initially really don't find this pleasant. It's not the kind of sherry cask I like. But I know you tend to like it more. It's, and the same thing with, like, the Buna 12 cask drink. Mm -hmm. I will not drink that whiskey neat. I like pungent. <laughs> you do. Uh, to me, it's too, uh, it's too much of the oak. I don't want heavy oak when I'm doing sherry. Same reason that our buddy Walsh Tour keeps telling us, good sherry is made in American oak, not European. But the, this is definitely, I would bet, almost anything this is a European uh, oak. The amount of spice in it, yes. Oh, it's very spicy. <clears throat> All right, Dustin, where are you as far as the whiskey score? You, said you, were, you were looking low before you put water in it. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up to an 87. 
I really enjoy the intensity and the power of this. Mm -hmm. And if I were just rating it on that, it could be much higher. But as far as the underlying whiskey, if you bring this down to 46%, which I haven't quite done here, this is not a great whiskey. It's got some flaws. It's very well done overall. But it's there's just not anything. There's a lot of things I can see off-putting. There's a lot of things I can see off-putting on here. And I think overall, it's a well-done whiskey. I like this different side of Highland Park. Glad I had it. Glad mm -hmm. I got to explore it. But I would not buy another bottle of this, even at that super low price. What was it again, price-wise? It's like $130, 140 I'd buy it. Might you buy, buy two. two. So that's the thing, yeah. Okay, sure thing. I'm an 88 on this one. Okay. And I, I, was, I, I was even, I would even say 88 and a half. So, what the Sherry Cast did to me, yeah, I mean, it was dark. It was first fill. It did exactly. It was slightly, slightly over oaked. It did exactly what I expected it to do. I'm not as sensitive to oak as most people. So if you're a sensitive to oak, take down that score at least one, maybe one and a half. But that doesn't bother me at all. I can change it up with a little bit of water. The sweetness was great. The pungent sherry mm -hmm. was something, and it, it was still smoky. I think if I would have waited longer, even though we've drank this down quite a bit, yeah. I think it waited a little bit longer, the Highland Park smoke would have came up. And as soon as the Highland Park smoke came up with a few drops of water, it was right where I wanted it to be. I, I, I really am enjoying the Highland Park smoke right now. Mm -hmm. And I like that distillery. But it also comes off a little younger than 16 to me. Sure. I, you, you could tell me 12 years. This is 12 year old whiskey. You wouldn't shock me. And if you said 14, yeah. I'd be like, oh, it's a pretty good age statement. Yeah, yeah. To me, it comes off more like a 12 year old that's been aggressively casked. And that's fine. You get 87, it's a good score. Definitely not the 85 I was thinking initially. Yeah, I mean, that really doesn't mean anything as far as a whiskey score. I mean, we gave the Moon a 12, cast drink from 2022, we gave that a 91. So, even though it does come off at slightly younger, that isn't a deal breaker for me. But again, when you have yeah, that... that one came off like it was 20-year-old whiskey to some degree. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. Right. Whiskeys can come <laughs> off very differently. My point is, I wouldn't necessarily say a whiskey that was 12 or 14 years old couldn't be a 91. Correct. I don't know. Again, it's it's... Has it gotten a level of maturity from the cast that we're looking for? And in this case, no. I think um, a little shy. I think they probably should have pulled this earlier. I think they probably let this one sit in the cast for too long. As I said at the beginning, they couldn't. Sixteen is a funny age statement unless mm -hmm. you're laggable, and this could not have made it eighteen years with the open. No. Yeah, it was right. It was right there. Anyway, those are our thoughts on the whiskey. If you guys have a chance to try this one, let us know what you guys think. Only. Especially if you're a fan of Highland Park, which we both are. Dustin, until next time, what do we wish the folks? Happy smoky drinking. We'll see you then.